on to our next award, ladies and gentlemen. The next honor of the night goes, is for, awarded for leadership and successes which are innovative, unconventional, and daring, embodying York's trailblazing motto, redefine the possible. Ladies and gentlemen, Nina Arsenault. For me, the artist's role is to follow their obsessions. If you work from that point, people will always encounter something meaningful. You want to find that thing that you do that is distinctly you, that's characteristically you. You want to find that thing that you cannot not do. Whether it's storytelling or, or, or art making or even having an interview and just talking during an interview, the more that is revealed, the more that is risked. The desire for fame and wealth do not cancel out the desire for love and uh, compassion. Feats are things that most people don't do. Things like staying inside a performance art installation for 40 days, or experimenting with extended time in darkness, or sleep deprivation, and then coming back to people and communicating what that experience is like. I think once you stop trying to be empowered, you have an opportunity to empower yourself. The person that I'm looking to inspire when I do my own work is myself. Quite frankly, anyone who sets out to be a role model is not inspiring to me. If you want to be inspiring, inspire yourself. Get yourself off. Do what you want to do. Make art from those places. Multidisciplinary artist Nina Arsenal redefines the possible of her art, herself, and the world around her. She has honestly and unapologetically documented her physical and psychological transformations through theater, photography, film, and print. She also travels the world speaking about gender, sexuality, the fine arts, and the rights and dignity of trans people everywhere. She's received several awards for her work, including Pride Toronto's Unstoppable Award, and continues to give back to York as a guest lecturer and mentor. In fact, it was her former York professor who edited a recent anthology about Nina's work entitled Trans Performing Nina Arsenal, an unreasonable body of work. Judith Rudikoff was my, my prof starting back in 1994. She was my playwriting teacher. And then she was my mentor when I did my grad work at York and uh, we've continued our relationship. I feel incredibly, incredibly privileged to, to work with her, benefit from her wisdom. I thought that Winters College residence was, maybe because it's an arts residence, or maybe because there was a lot of queer people as dons at the time. It was just a place to live where you could be anything you wanted to be. For me, that was very changing, that I could be queer, that I could be flamboyant, that I could be outrageous, that I could be not normal. All of that is, uh, yeah, was great. I'm honored that I'm winning the Redefine the Possible Award. I consider it a, a great honor. I feel that they're very, very important people in culture. and I recognize their, their accomplishments. I feel like I'm in grand company. I believe in heroes. I love heroes. I believe in greatness. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my great pleasure to introduce to you the recipient of the 2012 Bryden Alumni Award for Redefine the Possible, Nina Arsenault. Um, 
of course, I'm really, really honored to win the Redefine the Possible Award. And I think in service of not paying lip service to redefining the possible, um, it's such a huge honor. I'd like to acknowledge um, Winters College a little bit more. I talked about it in the video, that it was so OK for me to be a queer person there at Winters. For the first time in my life, I was 18 years old. I could not only be accepted or tolerated, I could have that wonderful, wonderful thing that happens when people do more than only pay lip service to equality. I could actually be equal. Because sometimes when people talk about equality, they mean that you get to be in the room, but you only get to be secondary or tertiary. And unfortunately, that doesn't always happen with what people say to you. That happens with how things are said. To be inside an artistic environment where I was just as good as everyone else, that was life-changing. And when I look at the other women in my community, I, when, I, when I say the women in my community, I mean transgendered women, the ones that unfortunately fall through the cracks of society who cannot maintain jobs or make significant contributions to culture, I notice two things. I, I, I see a line drawn between the women in my community. Those who are successful, whatever that personal definition of success means to them, number one, had the support and love of their parents. And those who did not, did not. It's that black and white. So I would like to take a moment and acknowledge the love and support of my mother, Sylvia, and my father, Bernie. I think the older I get, the more profoundly I understand how much I am my father's daughter, how profoundly I am my mother's daughter. The other thing I wanted to say about the transgendered women in my community, those of us who have been able to be successful have had the privilege of education. It's that simple. Those of us who have not, have not had the ability to um, be in school because we get bashed, we get told we're men. The psychic wound of being transgendered is reopened on a daily basis and, and we're pushed out of education system. I thank God that I'm able to, you know, if someone calls me a man or says that I'm not as worthwhile as them, I'm so grateful that I'm able to deconstruct the fact that they are attacking me with class notions that they're not aware of, that they're using uh, gender politic, and I'm able to understand these things as oppressive, and those knowledges are not academic or intellectual for me. They mean not only my survival, but my ability to thrive. I have York University to thank for that. And so at this moment in my talk, I would like people to, with an open heart and an open mind, imagine for a moment what it would be like tomorrow morning if you woke up and you looked into the mirror and you saw the genitals of the opposite sex on your body. What feelings of trauma would that put inside of you? What panic? Would you be able to function in society? And how would that affect your ability to give and receive love? And fortunately, this is a hypothetical situation that I'm asking you to um, consider, because that's not what happens to us as transgendered women. We don't wake up one day and see the genitals of the opposite sex in the mirror. For me, it was a slow burn that I realized maybe around three or four years old. And so I ask you again to consider with an open heart and an open mind, what psychological resources does a child have to deal with that realization? I'm talking about the first cut. I'm talking about trauma. 
the knowing that things will never be the way you want them to be. And in a certain way, I think that, I don't think I'm that different than everyone, probably even in this room, because we've all experienced trauma, all of us as a child. I'm very interested in when that first cut takes place, because I think at, at that point, there's a part of us that stops developing. And so, in, we all are children in adult bodies. But once we realize that, we can know that there's also a virgin part of us that existed before the first cut. And we can be very, very good children. And what's wonderful about children is they love so quickly, so easily, that children are so much more advanced in terms of their emotional life. In the artwork that I've been so privileged to be the creator of through um, my collaborations with Judith Rudikoff, uh, Buddies in Bad Times Theater, um, York University, as well as other universities in the States like Cornell and um, a city university of New York, um, uh, financed by BMO. Um, I just like to acknowledge them in those moments. I'd like to be able to share my understanding that we are not our bodies, that every old person has a young person still inside of them, and that is a very, 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 very wonderful gift once you realize that it gives you a lot that you can do with it. Thank you very much for giving me this time to speak. Thank you.